Okay, so now we're actually recording here. There was a quick question for those of you that didn't uh, weren't able to make it today about the wording of something and whether or not it's a conditional probability. So this is the day seven practice, um, the notes number five. We were just talking about how you can read a statement like, of those with school-aged children, this many supported the school tax. That's going to be a conditional probability of supporting it given that you have school-aged children. Okay. So just a quick note there. Were there other questions? If something says, are these two events independent? Does it mean if they're causally connected or if you have to use the equation? You probably want to just stick to the uh, equation rather than making that determination just based on your knowledge of the events. Now, that being said, if there's not any information given to you that you can calculate, like, so here's the answer to part B here. I had the information about those probabilities, so therefore I know that they're not independent. But there have been questions, in fact, on the day five notes that I just say, you know, hey, is tossing a coin twice, are those independent events or dependent events? So without even knowing maybe some specific uh, trials or cases or uh, specific probabilities, those would be independent events. I think one of the good cases of, you know, wearing a raincoat if it's raining, those are going to be dependent events. So. Yeah, sometimes you might just have to answer it based on your knowledge of what's happening, but more often than not, when I ask about independence, you'll be comparing those probabilities here. Any other good probability questions? Uh, Mr. O. Yes. So I was looking at like just probability questions online and there's yep. one about um like on, if you're on a game show with like the three doors thing and the hosts and you pick a door and then the host is like okay here's another door do you want to change your answer and then it's actually more probable like it's better for you to change your answer could you explain that like do you know what i'm talking about um i do know what you're talking about i think it's classically called the monty hall problem yeah if I'm remembering it correctly. Yeah. So it's, they, they even still have that show now. I think it's Wayne Brady does let's make a deal or something like that, where you have three doors to choose from the first door is open and you know, what's behind there. You know, if the big prize is waiting and you've already picked one of the two doors, you know, how do you know how to choose? And what I'll tell you about that, Harrison, I'm sorry that you're not going to get your answer is that it's a much more complicated probability case than what we see in our course for algebra two. However, a really good plug for AP stats is that that question exactly as we're describing it is something that you'll talk about in an AP stats course. So unfortunately I don't have um, a solution for you that we can go over because it's not in the scope of what we do with probability, but you're absolutely right. Like that's such a classic question and a classic probability question that I know for a fact they talk about in AP stats. So there's my plug. Go take AP Stats, guys, so you can get the answer to the Monty Hall problem as to why you should switch your, because it is more probable that if you switch answer uh, your doors that you'll you'll win the big prize. So good question. I had a feeling Harrison was going to come in with a good question like that today, but unfortunately, I don't have the answer for it. So <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. So I was thinking about this last night as, as I was doing notes. So yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure this it doesn't work this way, but it's kind of interesting to think about. Like, let's just say in the span of like in the domain of like negative infinity to infinity. Um, okay. Like what would be the probability of picking something greater than zero? Just like any number, real, unreal, whatever. Um, since there are infinite numbers... Yeah. greater than zero but there's also infinite numbers there's just infinite numbers in general so it it would be infinity over infinity which equals one <laughs> that's um a really it, great thought right so you're saying what's the problem sense, a number though, bigger than yeah right so what you'll find is that even though it's not necessarily a case for probability that when we have cases in math of infinity over infinity, it doesn't always mean that we get one as a result. 
which is crazy. Because it's a concept, not a number. Yeah, so like you'll find that when you're dealing with something called limits in pre-calc and then calculus, sometimes infinity over infinity gets you to a specific number like three and not one when it seems like, oh, infinity, like a number divided by itself is one. So, you know, what are those scenarios? Yeah, it's gonna, it's it's a great thought there, Michael. And I'm not sure we, we, we can come up with an answer to that one specifically, but you'll see cases that come up in the future in other math courses where infinity over infinity equals something specific and it's not always one, which is just a wild concept, but you'll have to, uh, I'll have to steal you all for pre-calc next year to show you what I'm talking about. Didn't somebody prove that if you match up every single number with the numbers double, it'll still be infinity, such that when you divide that by like infinity by like another infinity could equal like one half or like two or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so the concept that we can probably relate it to you guys is if you remember a horizontal asymptote at all, as if you're looking at a rational function, as the top and bottom get bigger and bigger and bigger of that rational function, the value for y is getting close to a horizontal asymptote, which might be at one, it might be at one half, it might be at three, it kind of depends what the coefficients are in that equation. So um, that's something that you'll definitely study more with rational functions in pre-calc next year. So these are great questions, I like them. Anything else I can help you with? We have a really good sized group here today. John, you know, if you pick one of the three doors, it's a 33% chance that the prize is, let me see what John Vito said. Oops. 33% chance the prize behind is your door and a 66% chance that in the two other doors. If one of the other doors gets taken out, there's still a 66% chance that the prize behind the other door that is still available. So if you switch doors, your chance from getting the prize goes from 33 to 66. Yeah, I like that. And there's definitely in the, like I was saying, in AP stats, you do like much, much more complicated scenarios of probability than we'll get to this year. The nice thing is that you get a taste for probability in this course. And I'll tell you things like conditional probability, like we're looking at right here, that definitely comes up in AP stats. So if you're signed up for that course already, or if you're thinking about taking it in the future, you'll see that come up. But you'll do much more complicated cases like the, you know, the chances in the game of Yahtzee of getting certain combinations on the dice to come up. All right, there's a lot of different scenarios that within games specifically that seem like they're easy probabilities to calculate, but in reality they're they're much tougher to uh, to analyze. So. That's something that, again, if you take AB stats, you'll discuss some of those scenarios. I like it. So I'm glad that it seems like you guys are in a good place with probability. And like, I think Shane had the question earlier, like when's our test gonna be? So on Monday, I'm gonna post the review sheet for, um, or at least my review answers. You guys already have access to the review at this point. So I'll post my review answers in a video on Monday. I'll maybe give you a day or two to work through that review and get caught up if you're behind it all. And then I'll post the test most likely on Wednesday, due by the end of the week. But don't be surprised if maybe Thursday or Friday you see some stats start to sneak in there. Because like I said, um, stats is gonna be our last unit, so. Okay, anything else you guys need from me? It's not seeming that way. I'm really glad so many of you showed up, like I was saying, because it's good to even just see your names and the list of people that attended the meeting. I wish we had a better way of communicating. I wish the Google uh, grid view was working better, but it appears that that's not up and running. 
Okay. So if you guys don't have any questions, we can, I'll actually hit stop for now. looks like people are kind of headed down anyway.